Okay. Is there any questions from what we discussed last night? I, I think people are, are you just you just loaded up uh, some files, right? Well, I just put one up there today. Okay. Pat has four more. Are they yours too, Pat Dolling? I just shot them over to Tom. Okay. But I think you have to. You were you were going to tweak them, I think, right? Uh, which ones? The American <laughs> counter affidavit. That's that's the one you put up at the uh, site. Yeah. And. Uh, that's the one I'm going with right now. The way oh, I've okay. got it written. And then okay. basically I'm utilizing okay. that in my court document also. Okay. But that one you can basically put out and send that affidavit out to, uh, uh, but you need to send these things out as you are, your right-hand person is the chief clerk of your court, okay? So it's chief clerk of court and then your PM. B number, your private mail bank number, which is your zip code dash your four digit box number. If you have a general delivery, you use the four digit general delivery number you have. Okay. But you should try and get your own private mail box. Okay. People don't realize that basically they were doing some of this for our benefit out here to make us private American bankers to combat the counterfeit and the conspiracy bankers out here. See, not everything is out here to be our demise, but we have to wake up to what is out here for our understanding to where we get the knowledge to be able to operate out here in with and combat their counterfeit world. So we need to wake up to the fact that not everybody out here is against us. There are a bunch of people out in the Patriot community that are against us. Or they're just naive and they are arrogant in thinking that they know everything about the law. And none of them knew anything about the 11th Amendment. They were all worried about the 13th Amendment, and they don't even understand what that 13th Amendment was all about. It was taken off the books to protect our titles of nobility of being a prince of America, of being a master, of being a chief of America. That's why it was taken off the books by the Supreme Court. But like so many things that are hidden out here, those court cases were basically in the private, so they are not exposed into the public world. The Supreme Court cases in the private? Yes. Wow. They don't release everything out here that people think. Yeah, I know. That, okay, your court case. Basically, you go in, you get a traffic ticket. And you do this right, and basically they will try and remove that from the records. They won't tell anybody what just happened. Because they don't want the rest of the country to know that they are a criminal court. They're the criminals, not us. They're the counterfeits. Not us. We have to stay behind the counter 
in the private. We're the shop owner or the trader behind the counter. And they're out on the other side of the counter trying to get us to gift things to them. They're trying to get something for nothing. That's the way the devil operates. They're shoplifting. In a sense, yes. Now, is there any questions from what I went over last night of the words that I put up there in the process? Well, I guess if there are no questions, then basically everybody understands what I put up there last night, and I don't need to go any further. Uh, I think we understand it, but we I guess we got to get it into our bones so we can use it. Now, when we do the 1099 OIDs, you can take the receipts. You do a 1099 OID, and when you send the form in, okay, the 1099 OID with the form 1096 form, you don't send it to Cincinnati or to Kansas City, or I mean to Austin. You send it to Austin, Texas, okay? Don't send it to Kansas City. But you're coming in as a, you're you're going to put on the outside of most all of your documents from now on when you deal with the public or when you deal with these government officials, you're coming in as the chief clerk of your court. So it's chief clerk of court and then your bank, your PMB number, and then your address on the outside of the envelope. And then you say that this is a, uh, basically, a uh, foreign uh, jurisdiction communication. Or transaction, however you want it, whatever word you want to utilize when you look them up in the dictionary and get a good understanding of these words. You make out your OID basically to make the payment to your person, your mister. And see, that's a title of nobility, mister, master. The dead cannot have a title of nobility. That's why they wanted the 13th Amendment to make everybody in this country dead. Take master away from you. Take chief away from you. Take your title of nobility as a prince of America away from you. When you break the word America down, it means a mere I can. An emir is basically a prince of a sovereign, a sultan, or a king. Since we have no king in America, we are all princes or princesses. We were born out of the canal onto the land, so we were banked. A man is banked, a woman is the shore that is deposited upon the land. That is why the song goes, the shores and banks of America, or whatever country the song really originated. I know I've heard it in some song, but the bank is the man, the shore is the female. 
The female shores up the male side. The home front keeps the fires burning. The man is basically the banker. The one who is supposed to make the earnings for the total support of the household or the estate. He was supposed to be the banker of the estate. You're not going to find most of this stuff out in the Bible, out in the open. You need to learn how to read between the lines. Just like I said, in most court cases, if they dismiss a court case, they're not going to put out there the reason why the court case was dismissed. Especially when you come in and you claim that they are operating in a conspiracy to defraud as a counterfeit governmental court. They do not have jurisdiction over equity. The 11th Amendment to the Constitution gave the equity courts back to we the people because we are the real banker of America. We're the holders and the responsibility persons for the assets of America. Now, when you do your 1041, there's another document there that basically, uh, when you, uh, or address, when you send your 1041 in, that, uh, let me see, I'll pull that one up, that you send it into Ogden, Utah. You don't send it into Cincinnati, and you send it into the P.O. Box that is addressed as a foreign country or United States possession. They have possession over our assets right now. So they are in possession. We haven't broken ourselves away as a free country or a foreign country away from them as a foreign country in a nation of America. So we send it to the IRS uh, Internal Revenue Service at P.O. Box 409101, Ogden, Utah. And a different zip code, 84409. Why have we constantly got shipped back from the IRS when we send it to the other addresses? Because those guys are in the public. We need to have our stuff go directly into the private respondents. Please mute yourself, the guy with the phone. That's me. Okay. Oh, okay. So, basically, we need to know where we need to send this stuff to the IRS, which office in the IRS we need to transmit our stuff to. So you go down to Walmart, you pick up all the receipts. You do a 1099 OID. Walmart is going to be the responsible party on that OID. Okay, you look at the OID, and you will see that basically it says recipient's name. Well, did not they not receive the payment? And you are the payer. And you need to do an original discount. 
And as a private banker, you can do the discounting. You use your uh, federal zone number or your PMB number, your private mail bank number. And then if you know their recipient's number, you put that in. And then for the account number down below, you can put either down uh, your 98 series EIN. That's what I would use for have a 98 series foreign grant or trust EIN yet, you use your estate EIN. If you don't have that, then you use your social security number. Someone is just making a lot of noise. They are scraping something or yes, uh, could you mute yourself, please? Thank you. What does discount mean in this case, Patrick? Basically, you've got to discount the fraudulent conspiracy doc money that's out here, the oh. bonds. You have oh. to discount them. Take, it the, take the bondage away. You're discounting the bonds. Uh, okay. You're turning it now into lawful currency. You're canceling their fraudulent debt. That makes sense. Think yeah. about it. Yeah. So, in the description of a private banker that we're allowed to discount paper, that means we basically deal with the counterfeit paper and turn it. We are paper. basically taking it into our temple, and we're taking the ten percent tithing away. The fraudulent uh, transaction. We're cutting away the hooves, the horns, the teeth, whatever we don't want to eat. Okay? And like I was trying to tell somebody earlier today, basically he couldn't comprehend this, that in Moses' time, they called a lawful contract a bull. But you still had to cut away certain things out of the contract to make a proper settlement. The other item that was sacrificed was a goat, and that is a counterfeit document. And there's very little meat left over out of a goat. And that's why it was called a scapegoat. People ask me, well, where is this in black and white? It's in the Bible numerous times over and over and over again. Same scenario. Just different metaphors were used at different points in time because the people couldn't comprehend everything out here. Just like they can't, most 90% of, 99% of the people in this country can't comprehend anything that I'm talking about right now. Because they've been inundated by the state and the church into believing all the wrong stuff. The de jure government of this country is the king in the movie Alice in Wonderland. He has been belittled by the queen who has grown into an enormous size. She's fat beyond her wildest dreams. Go watch the cartoon about Alice in Wonderland. Watch the movie, Something for Nothing. That is a remake of 
the movie Daniel Webster, The Devil and Daniel Webster. You can still download the the movie Daniel, uh, the 1941 movie of Daniel Webster, The Devil and Daniel Webster out there too. Anything that's worthwhile is out there for the taking. And you have a right to look at it, okay? It's been documented. You have a right to documentation. All of this copyright is counterfeit. Basically, the thing is paid for. So if if you 1099 your mortgage that you've had for over well over three years wouldn't that all be um, um, stuff that you could OID because it's paid for you basically OID what is uh, that you paid out of your back pocket okay so you're not the payer on the other of it yet all right okay you can only claim to be the payer on what you have paid out of your back pocket. And that is what you get the original discount and get that money back. Okay. The other, you order them to set off, if it's over three years, the bonds that were out there against that. You are the indemnified. And your fictional person was the indemnifier. So when you do the countersigning on the back of that mortgage and send it back to them and order the set off from the mortgage and from the Social Security account, which they utilized to draw the assets out there and write the bonds, you do the 1099-C for that portion and cancel the debt. Mm -hmm. But you sign that as your chief clerk of the court now it's an office to office transaction see you're not supposed to be seen out in the public world only the office is supposed to be seen and your office that goes out into their world is your chief clerk of the court the man that's standing behind the counter in the private. When you go into Walmart, is it the cashier that is making the settlement or is it Lucy Smith? It's the cashier. It's the cashier. Okay, so it's the office that is making the settlement or the counter offer. Patrick, when um, that's the office that we had um, to claim. Go ahead. Patrick, um, yeah. on this ten ninety nine C to offset the debt and we counter sign on the back. Um, I understand all that. But I've got a bill for my daughter's um, hospitalization and everything. She passed away, so it's $220,000. And so my address is where they're sending the bill, and it's going to go to collection agency. How do I get that so that I don't have to pay it? She signed all the papers before she died. I didn't sign anything. Okay, but now you are her Chief Clerk of the Court. Yes. Okay, you do a Form 56. Become the fiduciary over her estate. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should have a, a, a estate EIN yes, I for do. her. Okay. Then you put it against the estate, and you're coming in as the Chief Clerk of the Court. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Pretty simple. Start thinking like you're a court. They put all these templates out here for us to utilize. All we have to do is modify them for our court. And so I, where do I send this then? Back to the collection agency? Who sent you the bill? You give it back to them. Okay. I thought, I wondered if I could just send the papers back and say deceased, and then they wouldn't come after me. No, you don't argue. You basically make the settlement. Okay. You do the counter signing on the back. Okay. Now, if you paid anything out, you're going to do a 1099 OID for anything you paid out of your back pocket. Okay, I didn't. We're just starting. Now, we're, we're ca countersigning the bill that was sent to us, not the 1099, right? 1099C. Countersign the bill and basically do the 1099C and the subject. You don't need to go any further. You don't need to file a 1041. You do need to send the A copy in with the 1096, and you send that into uh, that Austin, Texas address. Okay. Or, yeah, 1090. Yeah. The 56s go to Austin, too, don't they? The banking one does. Yes. The 1056F, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And that's really the banking one. I got some um, frivolous filings from the 1041s that I did last month um, from my income taxes. Um, Do they have a bill on them, or are they just threats? Threats. Okay, then you disregard them. Really? You can turn around and do your American counter affidavit and turn around and send them a copy of that and say, keep off my ass. <laughs> um yeah, they wanted me to respond in 30 days, but I got some nice yeah. envelopes with $300 penalties on them. Yeah, and you turn around, you send those down to Austin, and you claim those as abandoned property. Yeah. Do it 1099A. But they, they didn't know what to charge me with, so they just said I was impeding. Um, yeah, they just give you a bunch of garbage. Right. They're counterfeit laws, okay? Yeah. And they didn't know who to charge, so they took every name that they had of me. They took an EIN number, and they took a Social Security number, and they just sent me packets and packets of forms and um, sent me everything in the book. Yeah, basically just send your uh, envelopes, do a countersigning on the back of them, and basically uh, say uh, make the delivery of this. Uh, per the attached 1099A. Send it to Austin, Texas. Along with the uh, A copy of the 1099A. We'll but shake I, them up. But I was going to amend it. I mean, because it was done incorrectly for the... Um, it was done with the 10% tidings, and I was going to change it because I do have money coming back. So maybe should I do it? What? What? You're you're talking about the envelopes now and doing a ten percent tidying? No, no, no. Um, with the income taxes, um, there there was. Don't amend it. See, you sent it to the wrong place. We sent them to the wrong. Oh, we sent okay. Them to the public world. I should just do. Go ahead and do. The correct Do one and send one it to and the right place. To, to the right place, to okay. Ogden, Utah, the one that has the post office box number. Okay, this came from Ogden, but it wasn't the post yes. office. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you All need right. to get into the private or into the foreign or international office. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. 
And see, you're not a legal resident or a principal business. You're outside of the United States Corporation. Your private place of business is outside of their jurisdiction. Correct. And that's why you have a PMB number, because that post office is in the du jour, the five-digit post office, it's not the postal office. It's the post office. Mm-hmm. The postal office is the dead mail. Right. And and they were sending this to a dead person anyways. Yeah. And that's why you need to turn around and you know, need to put your PMP, your private mail bank number on there, coming from your clerk of the court. Your office. That's easy. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else? I have a question for you, Patrick. Okay. I did um, 1099C, uh, 1096, 1041 for lunch money, three quarters of a million. Should I resubmit that um, with the um, 1099 OID and the 1041? No. You're going to get a frivolous filing letter from the public. IRS. Okay. Okay? Disregard it. Turn around and do another one, okay? And send it to the right place this time. You send the A copy of the 1099 into Austin, Texas at uh, and mark it as you are a if your legal residence principal business is outside the United States, you make that notation on a, the outside that you are a international American. Okay. okay. And you come in as the clerk of the court. You turn around and you do a 1041 filing coming in from your clerk of the court into Og, or yeah, Ogden, Utah, but the address that has the P.O. box number on it. Okay. Now you're doing a, you're coming in as a clerk of the court. Basically, that they have to now basically act. Especially right. when you're a bank. You're a private bank. What is the settlement in a bank? Come on, people. What is the settlement in a bank? What's the settlement in a court action? 24 hours in a court Oh, I see. Yeah. Seven two hours in a bank. Oh. So you're doing a banking private banking transaction when you go to that Ogden, Utah with your ten forty one into the P.O. box. Yeah. You're not dealing with the public commercial bank to where they will take up to 30 days or up to six months to give you your shit back. 
or they'll turn around and say, this is bullshit. You want the remedy? The remedy's here. We've been going to the wrong places. We didn't know who we were. We kept trying to put our name on everything. We need to just use our office. Which gets more respect? Susie Smith or Clerk of the Court? Clerk of the Court. You're damn right. Clerk of the court scares everybody out here. The judge just makes the ruling. The clerk of the court's the one that sends out the shit. The clerk of the court's the one that will bring it before the judge for prosecution. Nobody wants to mess with the clerk of the court. Now, here in Oregon, we have um, circuit courts, county circuit courts. And you have counterfeit courts, okay? Right. My question, though, is my understanding is we don't have a clerk of the court. We have a court administrator. Are they the same thing? Same damn thing. Okay. Okay. There's always got to be a clerk of the court present in any court action. There has to be a clerk there. Okay. I don't care what fraudulent titles they give to them because they're all counterfeit courts anyway, trying to operate in equity. They're the criminal, not you. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Okay, I got in a little late, so uh, just had a quick question. I, I, I'm really starting to wrap my head around a lot of this stuff, but... Um, I noticed that, there, uh, that there's others talking about this office of the executor, the executor letter. Is that in any way uh, no. fit into what we're Forget doing it. here? No. Okay. Okay. This okay. takes precedence over that. You are a private American international banker slash trader. Okay. Okay. Then you have a private international bank which is your PMB number, and that is a private mail bank depository. They deposit mail into that box, that safety deposit box, every day, except Sunday. Just okay. Like the <laughs> yeah, and basically it's a safety deposit box. Anybody that messes with that mailbox you're going to call in uh, the ins postal inspector. That that is that is absolutely genius, Patrick. How did you come up with that? I'm just Common curious. Sense. I know you do a lot of study. I, that just blows my mind. Common sense. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's it's been in the movies. The postal inspector is one of the highest things. If it's gone through the mail, they outrank the U.S. Marshals and everybody else out here in an investigation. Because it's now dealing with the mail. The du jour banking system of America. think I ever would have figured that out. I always thought the mail was just the mail was the mail was the mail. 
Well, there was a movie out about that, and basically, let me see if I can remember what the hell it was. Is that the one uh, with Kevin Costner? He's a postman. No. No. Okay. So no, this is. Uh, uh, Detonator. Movie oh, came oh. out in two thousand and three. Detonator. Okay. Detonator. I'm going to have to start watching more movies. <laughs> yeah, it's all in the movies. And they're documentaries. So you can bring a movie into any court action as your as a founding proof. Because it's been documented. In a lot of cases... Most of these movies are also recorded in the congressional records. Really? Under copyright. Damn, you go down that rabbit hole, don't you? <laughs> well, basically just listening to all these people out here trying to talk about this stuff, and they never really had the proper understanding. Hey, it's not just about us. It's a bigger picture. You have to have uh, peripheral vision. You can't have tunnel vision. And see, everybody runs around with tunnel vision. They're only yep. looking at their immediate needs. Right. <clears throat> You're right. Yeah. Wow. You've got to look at the big aspect of this. And basically, a lot of people get uh, tied up in looking at what's behind them and all of a sudden they're going over the cliff because they're too hung up on what has already gone by. You need to move forward and live in the future <coughs> or in the present. Going into the future. Get out of the past. Leave it behind. Patrick, I did have one one other question. Like I said, I got in late, so I don't uh, know what you guys were actually talking about. But um, all this this PAIB, this uh, all these things that we're doing to get out of the system. Um, I got to tell you, I, I'm I am plugged into the matrix. I mean, I've got everything that that's probably bad. I'm a, I'm a W two employee. Um, I've got car insurance. I've got health insurance. I've got life insurance. I mean, I'm plugged in. Um, can I still do some of this stuff as I'm – I mean, I, I know uh, uh, Tom said there's a kind of where to start, but um, I don't know if anybody really addressed, you know, you know, I, I'm just somebody – like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a W-2 employee. I'm, I'm probably more plugged in than some of the people here on this call. So um, can I still do some of this stuff? While I'm getting like uh, my W-8, or excuse me, my um, uh, state EIN, et cetera, or what would you suggest? I mean, you don't have to go into it if I need to just walk. You're not listen plugged to into them. Your fiction is plugged into them. Right, right, okay? right. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Right. Now, you need to turn around and you need to kill that fiction. You need to do the EIN and get an estate EIN for that fiction okay? okay then you need to start reading the latest documents that i put up there that american counter affidavit okay okay then right. you can start utilizing all of these other items out here the 1099 a's under that estate ein number you should also try and get a foreign grant or trust ein for your uh, bank, okay, because you're right. going to have to have a uh, EIN to interface with the public. And that's what that foreign grant or trust EIN is about, is an interfacing uh, number to make a transaction uh, to utilize the 1099 A, Bs, and Cs and the OIDs in the private. Okay, and I, but I mean, I can still 
I mean, I can still work. I'm just changing my, I guess, my status. Is that what it is? Yeah, but if you change your status fast enough, you'll probably quit work and basically uh, get your assets. Well, that would be nice. Maybe you can start your own business. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I got to get rid of all the insurance then too, huh? I mean, you said insurance like uh, the driver's license. Eventually, yes. Okay. Basically, it's a destructive. It's a vampire. It's sucking the lifeblood out of people. Figure it out. Okay. The premiums that you're paying in on life insurance, basically, if you had those premiums and you put those aside, you would be far better off in the long run. And you would help yeah. the country immensely by taking it out of the insurance company's hands because they're out there destroying the country. They're causing inflation. They're writing bonds. And basically their bond world is just about ready to collapse on them. Hmm. So I'll have to liquidate that thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got a lot to clean up. <laughs> yeah. How many All right. how many automobile accidents really are there per the number of automobiles that are out here? Yeah, you're right. What's your yearly premium on that insurance? You've already yeah, given them the title of uh to the vehicle. They're writing bonds out there. You didn't know that that title to the vehicle is an insurance policy. Then they get you to turn around and write another insurance policy because now you're protecting their ass. They've written bonds. Now you're protecting their bonds to keep the vehicle in good shape for them. Oh, man. I'm pissed. You ought to be. Well, it's not really their fault. It's, it's ours, you know. We, we, we didn't... You know, no, it's... It, it basically the uh, insurance guys too, okay? Yeah. Well, yeah, got because they clean never up. read the damn contracts either. But they went out and they tried to pass them off on uh, their friends and everything else, not knowing what they were doing, okay? Yeah. Just like most of the government people, they're out there trying to control us they don't know that we have the right to free will that's what we have and see that's where we come in as a court of equity we can adjudicate our bankrupt into bankruptcy and we can also do a probation in our court of equity because we have a free will of choice as the living where our fiction has no will at all. So the living will, the free will takes precedence over no will. We just probated that guy out of the system. We've gone through all these courts, okay? Yeah. We've talked about all these things before. Yeah. Okay? A lot of people think that they have, that the courts are going to be the probators. No, they can't do it because they do not have equity jurisdiction. The bankruptcy court that is out there, the federal bankruptcy court, is a total fraud. It can only deal with the people in the public world. It cannot properly adjudicate anything in the real world. You've said it a million times.
Um, you know, you were talking about uh, things that you get, like, from a court. And you said you never have to go to court. You sign them. It, it, is a summons basically the same thing, or what? What? How, what? How would something like that? Would you, could you sign the back of something like that? A summons? If you got a summons to go to court for something? Well, it all depends on what the summons is for. Okay. Okay. If you have a uh, citation or something, something you, you need, need to, to basically set, set that, that off. off. Or about a summons to appear. I mean, I think I've heard of that. For, Hang on yeah, a second. Said for whatever. Yeah. Okay, I'm on the phone now. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> yeah, we we do a set off. Okay, if you uh, basically uh, if it's going to be a criminal uh, citation, you need to find out what it is. Is there a charge associated with it? Right. Got it. Otherwise, basically, you uh, address the fact that you believe this court is operating in a conspiracy to defraud. Yep. And then it's a criminal court. They're the criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Call them. Yeah. Call them on the table. Yeah. getting better and better every time I listen to these calls I'm, I'm getting it that's just you know <clears throat> it's just it's doing it you know and just making you know we're going to make mistakes but um, that's all part of it yeah see for the most part people have been going out here and fighting the wrong thing in court they thought they knew the law but you can't know their damn laws have you ever gone and saw uh Hell, go down to your uh, local ASC office and look at the codes that they have just for agriculture. Basically, it will the volumes of the codes, uh, the CFRs and uh, the USCs, uh, will cover uh, probably a uh, 30-foot well, probably longer than that, probably about 60-foot uh, wall, about 8-foot high uh, bookcases packed full. No way. They they don't even know their own damn laws. No. no they way. don't even know them. Okay? So how do you think you can ever be an ex expert on them out here? That's why people just specialize probably. They just know that one law of one thing. And they just know that and they don't but they don't know anything else. Yeah. And in most cases that's gonna get them in trouble because they these guys have other things in there that are built in to uh basically override those other items. Yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome, Patrick. I really appreciate what you're doing. You're really, I think you're probably, the, you're, the, you're, you're there. Of everybody I've studied and listened to, you're, you're there. Well, I don't know partly it's because I don't think I've been can... down the road in all of this out here at different points in time. I've been a gambler. I worked in nuclear power, so I dealt with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, in codes and uh, in the CFRs and the USCs in uh, their process, so I know what uh, their laws, basically, I don't know the, all their laws, but I know the, the ins and outs of how they operate. Right. And, you know, I was looking at all these documents that you have, and, you know, I kind of came to a conclusion that, not 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 the bottom line, but basically what I'm getting out of it is you're you're almost really pointing out in those documents it's almost like it, you're you're just pointing out what rights we already have. Yeah. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're just reiterates like the Constitution. You know, people say, "Well, the Constitution gives you the rights." No, they they point them out. Like the right, uh, the right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. That doesn't give you the right to bear arms. That's that's already that you already have it. our rights. Right. 
so with these documents, when you talk about all these things that we're doing, it's like you're just reiterating what we what we're, we already have the right to. We're just kind of just I don't know by doing the documents, maybe that helps us really, as you said, know who we are. You know, you're really just kind of realizing that you already have this power. You're just giving notice more more or less. I mean, there's probably a few of them in there that you probably got to do, but um, that's what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, we're coming in. Basically, we're just uh, uh, going for uh, the enforcement in the process, in the process of what we need to know that we already had. The Declaration of Independence basically uh, reiterated our stuff on an international level, okay, our rights yeah. that we had. It just reiterated it on an international. So that's under treaty law. Now, that's higher than the Constitution. The Constitution just set up a charter corporation. But the Bill of Rights and uh, the other, the first ten, and then the other subsequent ones, the 11th, uh, 12th, and 13th, basically protected our rights. Now, the 14th created a total fraudulent government out here a counterfeit government, and basically almost all of the uh, uh, amendments after that are applicable only to that counterfeit government. Yeah. They're not applicable to the living people. You know, you know who I got to get your stuff to is Jack Smith. Yeah, I'll tell him I said hi. I, I will. haven't talked he's, to him in years. Of, yeah, he's been uh, he's got a Monday night call too. He's been stopped for a while. I think in the third he's going to start again. But um, I noticed he was kind of going with the David Clarence way. But yeah, I don't know about that. So I need to get I need to get to him and have him come check out your calls and get into the stuff because he was. I, I tend to think he's probably cl a little more closer would understand it. I think better than most of these other guys. That's just my take. I don't know him personally. I just have studied some of his stuff, so uh, I get that over to him somehow. <laughs> I don't know whether Jack Smith is a Fed or not. Basically, he's got uh, uh, federal contracts, and basically, uh, but that doesn't make uh, a lot of people have federal contracts out here. Yeah. So they're just trying to make a living in some regards. Yeah. That was a, a link uh, from one of the messages on uh, the Skype that I was responding to. Oh, no, sorry. Patrick? Yeah, he, well, that's how yeah. I found you. They were they had talked about you in a couple of times, some of the things you were doing. That's how I found out who you were. Yeah. Well, see, I basically, uh, he came out here to Iowa back in, uh, uh, let me see, what was it, uh, 2008 or something like that after uh, uh, that Tony Fisher King uh, had yeah. done a seminar out here. And basically I went up there and uh, gave him some stuff on 1099As and uh, was trying to explain that to most people because most people never looked at doing 1099As or Cs before. Mm-hmm. And basically, I didn't have all the the facts that I have now about those, uh, the federal identification number. That is not your Social Security number. That is your uh, zip code plus your four-digit number. Wow. As a private bank, <phone rings> private mail bank. That just it just makes so much sense. I mean, it really, like, you know, when you put it that way, it's like, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's right there in front of your face. Yeah, and see, and the PMB like, is found on uh, the 3575 form, change of address form. Nobody ever questioned what PMB stood for. <laughs> but they threw this out there. They have to show us the remedy. We have to get the knowledge to uh, basically get the understanding or the knowledge to uh, figure it out. 
Mm-hmm. And those those numbers all have meanings too, I think. Well, like nine digit in America is a bank routing number. Where the dash is determines where that bank routing number, what bank is using that number. So when the dash is between the five and the four digits, then that is a private bank. Wow. But, I mean, even the forms, when you say a 3575, there's got to be some meaning, to, some biblical meaning probably to that somewhere. <laughs> now, there's also a meaning to 11, okay? Seven, read the Bible more seven is the, basically the, the max time for a contract is seven years. Basically, at the end of seven years, you are supposed to be released. That's probably where Chapter 7 bankruptcy came in, huh? Well, no, that basically out of Deuteronomy or out of Leviticus. And uh, Chapter 13 and Chapter uh, 11 are... Uh, in there, basically, uh, those are uh, right out of the book of Leviticus. The whole bankruptcy uh, scenario is right out of the book of Leviticus. They have not created anything new out here. They can't. They're not that smart. But yet they can hide it away and put a bunch more frosting on the cake But it's still just a rock cake underneath. And as soon as you bite into it, you're going to break your teeth. (laughs) Have you heard the saying or the thing where they say, who's running the world? The the sons of Cain are running it, and the sons of God are the ones that are the debtors or the whatever you want. Well, you got to be careful on that. Cain broke away from the money changers. Cain was the good guy. Right, that's what they're Abel, saying. Abel, Abel was the fiction operating for the money changers. Hmm. The money changers are the ones that write most all of the stuff out here. Put the bad emphasis on the good guys. Black is white, white is black. The mirror image of things. And the news media is one of the biggest deceivers out here in this country. Yeah, I know. Hell, even the weathermen are a bunch of damn deceivers. They couldn't get the weather right if they... If their life depended upon it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding there. No. Okay, okay anybody you... else? Yeah, this is Stephen in California. Yeah, Steve, go ahead. Hi, Patrick. Uh, when you do a counterman or a revocation on the back side of uh, any documents you get, you know, when you countersign it, and you do a countermand. Um, how do you? How does the math balance up? You just add all the stuff, the numbers up together, and put a total at the bottom. Or we haven't seen that with a countermand on there. Well, basically the countermand do a is No, the countermand is basically if, like you go into court. Okay, yeah. you're going yeah. to do a countermand or a counterclaim against them. Right. Saying, hey, I want a thousand dollars to basically yeah. be a witness in your criminal court. Yeah. It's my time. I'm gonna get paid for my time. You want me to do something for you? You pay me for that. I don't do enough something for nothing. 
So you could put that on the back of a summons. You can do whatever you want to. That's what I'm saying. It's your document. You're the court. You make the ruling. Yeah, I'm just going to back bill for, like, when someone um, impounds your truck and you can't have it for a week or two or whatever. I mean, I got to get some, I got to back bill them for that. So that's a countermand, a counterclaim. Yeah. Yeah. Basically to do a set off basically that, uh, that cop took your truck from you. Okay. Yeah. So basically yeah. Uh, here is my counter bill. My, yeah. you gave me a bill. I'm going to give you a counter bill back. Okay as a counterman or a counterclaim. Now you right. hand it back to them. Now it's in their hands to try and make a counter offer. Right. I forget what movie that was uh, in there. Um, uh, what the hell movie was it? Oh, uh, My Cousin Vinny. Okay. So where basically uh, this guy in the pool hall lost uh, $200 to uh, uh, Vinny's uh, uh, girlfriend in a game of pool. And basically Mm -hmm. he comes in there wanting uh, to get uh, the money. And basically the guy makes it. uh, Vinny uh, says, well, here's what I want. And then basically the guy turns around and makes a counter offer again. And basically Vinny says, Oh, we've got a counter offer here now, huh? Okay, here's my counter offer to your counter offer. Right. See? You can do this all day long. Right. You keep throwing it back into their hands. Yeah, they they can't impede your uh, your right to contract. Yeah. And, 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 and you're doing a counter, counter man. man. Yeah. You do a counter signing and a counter man. And a counter uh, claims. You can do all of that. That's what I tried to put out there. You've got the power. You're the banker. You're the real banker. You have the assets. Mm-hmm. They are the criminal. So then at the bottom, you just tell them to, to where to send the check or something, right? Yeah, and basically, if uh, uh, you don't like what they say, okay, say, okay, we're going to move this to a civil court action into an Article Three civil court. And at that time... You will be the plaintiff, and they will be the defendant, and you will bring additional charges against them and say, if you do not settle this, I will bring additional charges of conspiracy to defraud and also counterfeiting in a civil action. Do you think they're going to go there? Hell no. Can, can you do that in your countersign? Can you make a little note like that with, and them not take it as a threat? Because they don't really like it when you make threats like that. Like when I told the put, cop, I go, you hey, got a little liability going on here. You do this in a court action, and you come in as a clerk of the court. Your clerk of the court stands higher than their public servant clerk of the court. Right. But, okay. but you can go ahead and say that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying that. That really Read isn't a threat. that American it's, counter affidavit. It's right. all in there. <clears throat> okay, I'll reread it. Yeah, it's it it's uh Dave, it hasn't Dave. stuck in my mind yet. Dave, this Marshall. If you read yeah. his last posting, he has that in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you see, we're coming in with that affidavit, and we're going to stop. There uh, is a counter and a stop and stop. This affidavit is a counter and stop of all false presumptions made by the public officials. 
and you can send that, a copy of that affidavit into your sheriff, send it into your local uh, counterfeit uh, clerk of the court that's basically wearing two hats, okay? But most cases that they handle there are criminal uh, actions, primarily against traffic tickets and shit like that. They cannot adjudicate in their courts anything dealing with equity. They use false equity or counterfeit equity in their courts, which is a criminal uh, item. Yeah. Because it's it's using counterfeit and basically uh, counterfeiting uh, the lawful currency in their process. So they're all criminals in there. When when I do a countermand, I mean, th- one of the things that the, the the sheriff deputy did was he betrayed his sworn oath. That's a capital offense. That's got to be worth like at least five or ten thousand dollars. I mean, if that's a capital offense, I mean, it's actually you know like if somebody prosecuted him for that, it'd be worth millions. You just he go after his what? Sworn you, oath. you you just go after the proper thing, okay? What damage you have been actually harmed, okay? You let the right. other stuff lie, okay? Right. You'll get like yourself into yeah. I'm not going to get okay. greedy, but yeah, it would it would be over a thousand bucks. I mean, it cost me thirteen hundred dollars to get my yes, truck back. But he is an but, officer of that court. You're going after the court. Yeah. Okay. The court is the one that basically is the counterfeit out here that also has uh, access to uh, the state insurance bonds and everything out here that are held yeah. by the driver's license and by the certificate of title to the vehicle. Right. Okay. I don't have to say that. They know that. That's what it's for. Yeah, and basically that's what uh, you're – you should say something along that lines. I'm in your countermand, okay? Yeah. That you're drawing against that insurance policy. And then when you uh, turn around and get the full understanding, you're going to terminate that you should do your uh, uh, trade agreement out here between you and your fiction. Right. And that's held privately. I don't have to send that to anybody, but at that's least I have it. That's held privately. That is a private. And then you turn around and you do the adjudication in a bankruptcy and a probate action as a private court. You're going to hold this at your kitchen table. You've got your clerk of the court. You've got the the judge, who is you. And then you've got the plaintiff, who is you. And then basically you've got your fiction person sitting over there. And you just put a little placard there and say, uh, Jack uh, Jones. Right. Okay. A lot of these other patriots, they wouldn't even, uh, they would always say, oh, you can't adjudicate your own court case. Well, you can. Yes, you can. That's for the 11th Amendment. Yeah. Another more bad information. There's a a maxim of law that says you cannot adjudicate your own case. What? There is a maxim of law that says you cannot adjudicate your own case. But it's... But it's not totally your own case. Okay. You have yeah, how many persons? Right. Yeah. They're all Good. each basically individual <clears throat> persons, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Think about it's, this, okay? See, that's where most people screw up. They don't think far enough. They they they've got tunnel vision. You don't see right, what that maxim said, is really saying. Well, here's one for you. Yeah, but you said yourself that your left-hand person has the right to, has, is supposed to protect the right-hand man, too, you know. 
Well, basically, in the public out there right now, he is yeah. operating as the indemnifier for the master. Okay? Yeah. Not the right-hand person. The right-hand person hasn't come into play yet as the clerk of the court. Yeah, it's well, good to have this. One. How many Straight disciples on. did Jesus have? Twelve. Twelve, and he got rid of one, didn't he? And then the church had to bring a third one, or a, a twelfth one back in there to pollute the damn thing. The Judas. Well, you know that, that affidavit that you have, Patrick? You know the, the, yeah. there is a maxim of law, too, that says an affidavit unrebutted stands as truth. So right. Just that alone, they can't rebut it. They'd have to rebut it with another sworn affidavit. And they, they can't rebut this person. because basically this is an unrebuttable document. Right. Hey, real quick, the two or three yeah. cent stamp, what what does that actually do? What what is what is that what's behind that? When you put well, that, that is uh, a mail, okay, a private mail. Okay. Okay. It used to be two cents up until I think in the 1930s, and then they jacked it up to uh, three cents. <clears throat> so basically, and see, a postage stamp is mail, is money. So now you have just mailed and deposited that by posting that and stamping and postmarking that uh, stamp as being delivered. Hmm. Yeah, I know so it's, right now, now. it's now been deposited, right? Right. Because I noticed that on some of the documents it says two or three stamp with red thumb print and seal. Yeah. Well, basically, I was just trying to save a little money. And see, uh, you never send anything out by certified mail or registered mail any further, okay? Oh. We will send most of this stuff out when we go to the Attorney General, when we go to the Secretary of State, when we go to uh, the Treasurer. We will send a copy of our writs of ejectment and uh, uh, possession and uh, our writ of uh, uh, assistance out to the IR, to the IRS and to the U.S. Uh, secret or to the yeah to the U.S. Secret Service and to U.S. Marshals, we will send them a fax that we will back it up with a uh, mail coming from our clerk of the court, and we will use the forty-six cent stamp. Now you have two deliveries. As soon as you drop that in the post office, it is now delivered. It's been mailed. And the mail must go through. So basically the delivery is guaranteed. <clears throat> okay. Um on the International Bank Trade Agreement, number one, where it says EIN, SSN, I noticed the EIN has two X's, a dash, and then the rest. Is that more or less the Social Security number broken up or no? No, no. That is a, a, a state EIN oh, number. Oh, state. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I got to get that. I got to get that first then before you use that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you don't have it, you just drop that portion off. I think that's okay, why gotcha. I put that in yellow. Okay, okay, great, great, thank you. Okay, that's yeah. what I okay. All right. Yeah, this is, man, this is, a, you know, it's actually it's actually looking easier and easier the more I look at this. I mean, at first it seemed really, really like what uh, the I guess uh, <laughs> stamps are now 49 cents. Yeah, I know. Damn well, that's a lucky number for me because I'm a 49er. Hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought you meant my great great grandpappy Patrick was uh, uh, naturalized in 1849, and I was born in 1949. And then also uh, the Expatriation Act is uh, uh, 249. Chapter 249, I think it was, was, in Volume 15 of the Statutes at Large. Well, so I'm a big 49er. <laughs> hey, Patrick, it's Gita. Are you on yeah. Skype also? Uh, yeah, I'm on Skype, but I'm Somebody's not talking on Skype right now. I no, somebody, um, Corey asked uh, a question, I think it's 614, 615 or something. He has like a huge thing. It's just too long for me to But that to wasn't that Corey that Corey didn't Corey. you ask that uh, already about your employment? Did he ask it already? Because he says I, he I think it. he asked it already. It's a, All right, his, okay. Uh, his, uh, his uh, question on the air was much more concise and to the point than his written version. It's so much quicker. Yeah. But an, but anyway, let's play that lottery number two forty nine. You said it was. The chapter number. number. <laughs> and basically, that. it's ex, the Expatriation Act mm-hmm. of eighteen sixty eight. And see, that's for an American citizen, and you are an American citizen. You are an American. You're not a United States citizen. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Patrick? Yeah. Marshall. Correct me if I'm uh, I'm wrong here, but I don't know if this would help people to think about it. But you gotta, and I know you've been saying it, but it's not sinking in. Is that we have to wear many different hats as one person? A lot of these other people are only wearing one or two hats. They might be the clerk of the court, but they also are a private person too. So when we're signing these documents, we've got to think about what person we are when we're doing this work. Am I right or wrong? Right. Yeah, you're signing as uh, your, uh, hang on just a second. Uh, You're signing as the uh, fiction, okay, and see, that's like on a traffic ticket. You just print the name on that ticket, okay? on the front side. Now, on the back side, you do the signing, the countersigning, as the clerk of the court. Now, basically, in your bank, uh, basically, you've got uh, vice president, president. Uh, You can be a bunch of different uh, officers in your bank. Right. That's what I'm trying to get people to think about that we are many different people in their counterfeit world. They've got individual people doing the same jobs that we're trying to accomplish with this paperwork. Well, it's just like in the real world. I mean, basically, uh, how many different tasks do you have going on right now? You're a multitask person. Correct. So one, one day you can be a car mechanic. Another day you can be an electrician. Another day you can be a plumber. Another day you can be a gardener. Okay? Basically, right. What did Jesus have? He had a fisherman. He had a uh, tax guy. He had uh, basically a lawyer. All in his 12 disciples. Right. That's what I'm trying to put out there to everybody, to help them understand or to wrap their head around what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. 
Now, see, people just need to get a little more uh, bigger retrospect in uh, the big picture instead of just looking at the tunnel vision and just working on one little piece of the puzzle. You're never going to get the puzzle solved if that's all you can concentrate on. Well, I just I, I just wanted to put that out for everybody to hear it from somebody else rather than just always hearing it from you. You're right. You're trying to do this, and, and we're just not getting it. It's finally sinking into me on some of it, but I had to go out and practice some of it. I ended up spending two days in jail because of it, but I got myself out of jail without being fingerprinted, without being photographed, by signing the document for my fictional person as the private American curator. Yeah. And basically when we really start going after them now with this uh, counterfeit, that they are a counterfeit uh, court, and basically they do not have any right to adjudicate uh, equity and that they are operating a conspiracy to defraud out here. Uh, basically, they're going to, and we will uh, basically let them know that we're not going to stand by and uh, let them violate the real laws out here because we are a private bank court and we are a higher court than they are. Equity is the highest court out there. Right. I like the way you put that document together. Like okay. I said, we really got to read it over. You know, maybe you need to do a separate audio on that, but I don't want to waste your time on just that. But to get a true understanding of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, see, equity is always higher than uh, anything else out there. Because that's the real substance, equity. And you're the one that's in charge of the equity. Patrick? Yeah. Um, this has been covered, I'm sure. I just don't understand how this is going to work, but if I uh, revoke my signing of things like driver's license and, and uh, Social Security, how will I have an income? Because I received Social Security. So you how would I have got it, You just sit back and wait, and I'll get the private court document out here. But you okay. need to think about this, okay? When you revoke those and you send those into the Secretary of State, you're going to be terminating insurance policies out there. You're going to yes. be getting money back. Oh. They owe you, okay? Okay. You have your Social Security account. When you revoke the Social Security account and when you revoke your mother's undersigning on the certificate of live birth as she was one of the guardians that she was the weaker of the two guardians in the process. So that's why they got her to be the undersigner on the document. Okay. Now, some cases they got somebody else uh, to be the undersigner on the thing. But it doesn't make any difference. You're going to revoke that because now you're of age and you can revoke any of those underwritings out there. You're supposed to be a free person on the land. Now, as a free person on the land, does a free person need to have a license? No. Only someone who is going to commit a violation needs to have a license. Okay. 
and then basically you need to do uh, your when you do your revocation of uh, those items with the Secretary of State. Now, the Secretary of State, because you are a private American international banker and trader, you need to have some documentation to allow you to carry on your trade within the state. So they're going to have to give you an international passport. Oh. Will they do that willingly? When you ask for it, and basically when you call them on the carpet the right way, yes, they have to. Okay, how do I call them on the carpet? Because I'm sure that when I revocate... Okay, you just need to listen to, and you need to concentrate on thinking about this. Read the affidavit, okay? You need to get an understanding of what I'm saying in there. Okay. To know where you really stand. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. But it's all coming to a head here, okay? Hey, Patrick. Um, yeah. I, I did the lunch money in December, and I just went to my desk, and I'm looking. I got two letters from the Internal Revenue Service, Department of Treasury, and it says um, what you said. They, they also said on one of the pages that um, what I need to do and what happens if I don't respond? Um, it's a five thousand dollar penalty. They're saying that we will ask, assess <clears throat> the five thousand dollar penalty for two. Okay, so here's what you do. Okay, it's, a, it's two. One, you two, do three. the affidavit, the American counter affidavit, and you send them a copy and say, "Get off my ass." Yeah, all four of them has the same person as the contact. So uh-huh. I need to send. I need to send it to that that person. They said person to contact, Mr. Carver. Yes. And so basically, can... you can turn around and do a uh, form two eleven and a thirty nine forty nine a, and also a W nine against that person. They're in the public world. They're just making threats. And I have to send you don't to have to uh, basically operate with them. Okay, the affidavit. <clears throat> now, we sent our stuff into the wrong place. We will start going into the private IRS from now okay. on so that we can get our assets from them. They're just a bunch of liars and crooks. Right. I think that's well. I think I sent it to the wrong one. I went to send it to the public yes. instead yes. of the private. Yes, and that's why you got it back. I've got several of them. I got another one today. Yeah, Gita, that's the same one I got. And you did you uh, did you send anything back yet, Pat? No, I just got it today. Oh, good. So we'll do it together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got four of them because I sent in four in December. The same so here. Twelve hundred dollars. Um, is that what it is? All right. Well, three hundred dollars an envelope. Yeah, that's right. Well, I only got two envelopes, so that's only six. But then I have another three envelopes somewhere. All right, Pat. We'll talk about it later. Money, money, money. (laughs) Yep. Interesting. They they put it in such a way that they they they, you're right. They they threaten you, and hopefully fear would set in, and you would just do what they want you to. Yeah. So you do the American counter affidavit right back at them, mm-hmm. and basically you can turn around and you will take them into a civil action. So when or I, I so this letter that he sent me, this they're all the same four of them. Um, I would attach it to the uh, affidavit, right? What? I would I would send a letter back with the affidavit. No, basically send a fax back. Oh, just send them a fax? Yeah, most of the time they send you a fax number. You can just turn around and fax it right back to that uh, person that sent that. 
play it in Ogden, Utah. That's um, 1973 North in Ogden, Utah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll have to look for the fax number. Yeah, and you Hello? send it back as you're coming in as the clerk of the court, and you're giving oh. them an order, okay? They a court order. order. You court give order. them a court order to back the hell down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are, yeah, they didn't really give a fax number. You just contact telephone number, 1-H, toll free. Well, I'll look at in. some of your previous ones, oh, Stacey, yeah. out there, and you probably had a fax number <laughs> on one of those. I have a sheet that has telephone numbers and fax numbers for a lot of the offices. All right, I'll connect with you on it. Okay. And, and Gita, you could call uh-huh. it a stand down. Oh. <clears throat> call it a stand down if you want. Oh, geez. It's, it's a no, polite way to say that. They are threatening war against us. Yes. Yeah. And you're responding to their threat of war. Well, Patrick? Yeah. Are you there? Yes. My name is Steve. I'm I'm calling from California as well. Do you have? This is my first time. You know, I've been listening off and on. But do you have like a a, a booklet or something, or instructions that I can just read it, the information, and and digest it and go over it several times? No. Do you have something no, like that? No. Basically, the only thing I've got is the documents that I have up on the group site. Okay. Uh, you can talk to Tom about. Uh, uh, he's got them backed up on another file, but if you get on to the We the People, uh, okay. all one word, underscore shareholders, and okay. go into the file section, and especially the uh, prime, uh, the latest, all the latest documents are in, uh, you are an American curator folder. Okay. Okay. And then okay. go through and listen to the audios for probably, since you're just new, probably the last month. Okay. 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 And, okay. and that it. link is in. Uh, you go into the link section, and mm-hmm. uh, like Tom said, it's the first link in the link section. You you open that up, and you can uh, download all the audios uh, back to uh, into December there. Okay. In June. We we have them since June. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, and everything okay. we should be, it should be posted on on the site. Cause I, I did join the group. I, I joined the group, and I just need to go back and look on the on the site and see what you got posted, right? Yeah. Yes. And I, if you I read the documents, sure. try and get an understanding of what uh, they're saying. Okay. 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 All right. And All then, right. if you have I should, any ha- questions, I should have, I, sh- I should have an email out tomorrow, which will give you inst- uh, instructions. It's for people who just joined the group but gives you instructions for how to navigate the Yahoo site and how to get and use the backup site. Okay, do you, have my email? do you have my email? No, I'll, I'm going to send it out to the group. If you join the group, you got it to the group. Okay, yeah, I should have, if you don't have my email, I can give it to you. you know, if, if, no, yeah, I, I send just it to the I group. I just don't recently. If, if, you're, if you join the group, if you're getting emails from the group, then you will get it. Okay. And I will also okay. I will also have that email sent out every two weeks. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, Patrick, this, this is great information. I mean, I'm, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of these guys from the public world taking advantage of us. I don't like it, and I've been trying to find out how this whole system works. So I, I want to make a change. I, I really do. And it's just ridiculous okay. how they 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 blood sucking people. You know, especially me. Okay. So, Hey, listen, Patrick, I just saw something else. Now, I'm looking at one of the envelopes from the IRS, and on the bottom of it, it has my zip code, the first five, and you know how it usually has a dash and then the last four? This one has a uh-huh. dollar sign in between the two, the five and the four numbers. That's, look at what the postage is up the top. It's only 46 cents. That means that that is real money. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. the dollar sign in between the um, zip codes, the five and four. Yeah, we'll see, okay. basically. I mean, you, you'll you see that dollar sign on uh, some of your other letters, like coming from the utility company. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right, yeah. yeah. And gotcha. on other envelopes that have uh, the postage on it. So if you ever see that down below to where you have the dollar sign, you know that that is money that you can collect. 
Interesting. It's right there in plain sight. Yes. Okay. Let's see, that's one to where you would send it into that mail or that uh, business mail entry office in your uh, uh, area that I was talking about previously uh, this year. That's for the $300 envelopes? Yes. Well, well if mine it's got postage on it. If it's got postage on it, okay? Oh, okay Anything okay. that's got postage that has uh, the dollar sign down below, you can turn around, and that is money. You can send okay. that back in and claim that back from the postal system. Okay. I was confusing that with where we send the $300 envelope. Sorry. No, you send three hundred dollar envelopes. Basically, uh, uh, you're to going Austin. to send those back to. Uh, I'm going to send mine to Austin. Right. You've got, got a lot any now. Of the others to work, so I'm going to turn around and start sending stuff to Austin. See what the hell comes out of there. Okay. Yeah, this one is asking uh, to respond to Ogden, Utah. But that's the public. That's not the private. Well, we have a private address for him now. Mm, okay. Now, just look at where the 1041 basically says to send things when you are not a, uh, a U.S. citizen. Uh, you send yeah, it to I... the post office box in Ogden, Utah, which is a different zip code entirely. So it's a different office. That means there's something going on there. And basically the only thing I could see is that it's in the private. It's like reading music. <laughs> what? When we use the, the, the PMB, you, I noticed on your forms you use a five plus hyphen and then four more. Is that the correct way to do it or just do all nine? Five plus five hyphen four. Yep. For the P and B. Yeah, you put down your full number, your five-digit post office or yeah. post office number, and then you put your uh, dash your four-digit number. Right, just like normal. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it didn't need to be all yeah, together. Yeah, that's your P and B number, your private mail right. Right. bank number. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure I understood it correctly. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. You can. Hey, any more? Patrick. Look, look. Yeah. Just another thought here. I was playing around with just writing down the numbers. You know, we've got the Social Security number. We've got the EIN number. We've got bank numbers, all nine digits. Now, can banks also have two bank numbers? One for, for like, the public where they're doing merchandise for us, you know, as uh, the public, but then they also have their... Mail mailbox bank too, so they actually have two hats there as a bank because they're no. also receiving mail. No. no, no, okay. You have one federal bank number, one American bank number, okay. Now, if you get up and move, then you get a new bank number, okay. You're moving to a different state or whatever. So now you have a different post office and a different box number. No, you're missing my question. You're missing my question. I understand what you're saying we have, but I'm asking in the public, can they have two numbers, not us? That is basically they are utilizing the EINs, okay, in the public world. That is the interfacing number out there in the public world is the EINs. 
and the social right. security that's the number. Right, social security number, because that's also a nine-digit number. Yes. And see, that's what I'm saying. If you do not have your estate EIN, then you just use your social security number. But my question is, is the bank gives us a routing number when they give us a checking account? Their bank routing number? But don't they also have a second one, their mailbox? Yes, they do. That's in the private. Right. That's what I'm saying. They can have two numbers. We don't. Well, basically, a bank can have about four different bank routing numbers, okay? Okay. They can have 20 bank routing numbers, depending on what transactions they handle at that bank. The type of bank that they are, then? Yes. See, someone will have a savings, a different bank routing number for their savings accounts. Right. They will have uh, basically then uh, a commercial bank accounts that may have a completely different bank routing number. We don't and, have to worry about that, okay? No, no, I know that, but it, it helps. It helps. Hopefully, it helps people to understand that there's more usages or more of those numbers out there. But we just need to be concerned about our private one. Yeah, or basically, but if you have if you have two mailboxes, okay? Say you've got one in Montana and you've got one in Florida. Okay, now you have two uh, PMBs. Right. Okay. Hey, yep, yeah, it makes total sense. Uh, hopefully I'm not trying to confuse anybody, but if anybody has a question, they can either email me or call me. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I've okay. applied for that EIN number. I still haven't got a response, but um, I faxed them twice. Um, can I say pending is EIN or just leave it blank? Or just don't, just use your Leave it blank number. for right now if you don't have one, okay? Yeah. Okay. And basically, uh, if uh, you haven't heard They're from dragging. them, I would get on the phone and start calling them up. Yeah. All right, I'll do that. Yeah. You should have had yours by now. You've been at this for uh, several months oh, I know. now. So. Yeah, when did I you know. send it in? I sent it in in October, and I sent it again in uh, December. Oh, you should have it. Mm. Call it was me. right before oh, that. I would get on the oh, phone and start asking him about this. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Tom, go ahead and end it. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Uh, down the road. Thank, thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, okay. We'll wrap up the call and I'll post it for everybody. It's a okay. good call. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. Good night. Good night.